So on this end of the unit, we've got a sight glass, the ports, the ventilation ports, and we've got the end drive of the auger. So what this does, it enables me to see within this chamber. So what, why would I want to look in here? Well, because it's the primary side of the chamber, and we've got in the back of that a plenum, so the plenum appropriates the air around it. What it's doing is it's sucking it with immense force into this area. So all the stuff that's, that's being drawn out of the atmosphere in your encapsulation ends up going through here first. So we have a primary side, secondary side. The primary side is where all the big stuff goes. So say for example, within that stream of air, there was sticks, rocks even, um, branches, all this sort of stuff. The big stuff will end up in this side. So all this is doing is do the primary clean. Inside here you've got some mesh on the bottom of it to stop the big items dropping down into the auger and save you getting inside and pulling it all out. So the side glass gives me the opportunity to have a look periodically during the course of the day to see what the build up is of those debris. So obviously if the debris becomes quite surmountable, I, what I'll do is I'll stop the machine, take the ducting off and remove those big debris to stop restrictions because ultimately you get enough in there it will, will become a restriction and also too they'll go to the back of the plenum and become difficult or wedged difficult to remove. So again you see what I mean it's not something you just turn it on and walk away and leave it you have to look at the environment that you're in and say okay then well look there, there is a lot of stuff floating around here paper and so forth so if it does end up in this environment it gives you the opportunity to view this primary chamber to ensure that you can remove the debris. So this is where your ducting goes on, this is where you attach it around here and you can put a band around here or even use a simple thing like duct tape to hold your ducting on there because you remember it's being sucked on there so it's not as if there's, there's something that's going to give it uh, a, a reverse type of inertia and blow it off, it's going to be sucked on there. So believe me, it wants to stay on there at 40,000 CFM. So you've got four here. So say for example, I needed all four, of course, I would take the blanks off and run all four. Most jobs require two. It depends on the environment and the cubic meters that you're trying to extract the dust from. And it even says here, blank off extra port inlet ports when not required. So I might need three, two, probably even one. Depends on what I'm doing. So appropriate this to the requirement on the other end. Now as I mentioned here, this round drum is the end of the pilot drive of your auger. So this is a bearing. The auger is suspended inside this housing. And there's always notations throughout the machine to a to alert you as to what's required. Never activate discharge until ensuring waste bag is sealed to the outlet. Waste bag is sealed to the outlet. So what's that mean? Well, we have another butterfly valve here and the butterfly valve itself closes that valve here because you've got to remember you were trying to suck air through here. So we don't want to create a vortex inside there by leaving this open. So this is closed during operation. So when would I open this? When this is set up properly, and as I mentioned earlier, you'll appropriate a waste bag or drum underneath this. It's important to remember too that that waste bag or drum is sealed around the top so when that you open this particular valve, that all the debris is dispensed within the drum or the container that you appropriate underneath this particular valve. The importance comes with the type of environment that you're cleaning and the dust is being removed. So for example, lead. If it was a lead environment, you would be pedantic about setting up the drum, appropriating a seal to ensure that it can't escape and you don't overfill the drum. And it even says here, warning, do not overfill waste drum. So there's all these little reminders around this unit with labeling in relation to its operation. The important thing to remember too that if I appropriate a drum underneath this, that I do seal it up, but I still need to be able to know when it's full. So, so just remember that you need to periodically check to see how it's going in relation to its dispensation. 
You can operate this valve with the machine running. Personally, I'd be more inclined to stop the functionality of the dust extraction and then dump this. Why would I do that? If I disengage at the other end, it's a lot quieter this end and I can hear what's going on. So then I can understand what's going on in relation to this here. Also too, with the machine running, it tends to have a diverse effect in relation to how it dispensates that. Because gravity still plays a part in this. You can see the shape of this, so all the debris tends to fall to the centre. So while the auger is driving this back towards me, that means that the rubbish that's fallen in the centre has been driven back. So it's mechanically moved back towards the end of this dispensation valve. So with the spring lever to hold the valve closed, I can release the spring and open the valve. Now without the machine drawing over the top and gravity playing a part in this, by opening this valve, it, it all comes and falls back this way, whereas if you have the machine running, it tends to create a little bit of a vortex the minute I open that. And that only happens when there's not a lot of material in there. When there's, when there's the appropriate amount of material in to start removing it, you'll find that it seals itself off. So that if you have this running, it'll run out for a period of time, and then it'll start to, you'll see this little vortex arrangement starting to eventuate here, and you know that you're getting towards the end of it. So it's, it's really an individual thing. Personally, I prefer to turn that off so that I can hear and see what's going on here. So make sure you keep this area clean. So give it a wipe down periodically. And of course, remember that this is the end of the shaft and this is where the bearing is for this particular auger. They always have lubrication points. In this case, it's a grease nipple on the top. One mistake a lot of people make is they say, oh yeah, there's a grease nipple. We'll whack a bit of grease in that, she'll be fine. Always wipe the top of the grease nipple and make sure that there's no accumulation of old grease on the top prior to initiating the nipple over the top because the nipple is, the grease lubrication nipple is going to be depressed. That little ball bearing in the top is depressed. So any rubbish or debris that's left on the top and you start greasing that, whatever that debris was, you've just impregnated those roller bearings with that debris or contamination. So make sure they're clean and wiped clean. Normally what I do on this end is I'll wipe that once I've greased it and put a little bit of tape on there, a little bit of duct tape. It just makes it easier so next time I come along I just whip the tape off, whack the grease nipple on there, away I go, squirt a couple of pumps. Do I stand here and pump for half an hour and think, yeah, it must be greased, it's got to be greased now. Ultimately, it only needs two or three pumps a day. So at the end of the day when I go around and do my walk around, or even when I start up in the morning, wipe the nipple, couple of pumps, and I mean pump, pump, that's it. If you see it oozing out the back of the seal here, you know that it doesn't need any more grease. So common sense prevails. Keep it clean, keep your hands away from, don't go putting your hand up inside there when you're operating that auger. How can I put my hand up there? Well, you can't really, because ultimately, remember what I said? You're going to seal the drum and, and make sure that the dust can't plume out while I'm trying to empty the unit. But that's not to say that somebody won't put their hand up in there. With the butterfly open, there's a small gap there you can put your hand in there. Would you want to? Absolutely not. It'll drag your hand clean off. So there's a safety, an imperative safety aspect of this. When that auger's operating, don't take the cover plate off and put your hand in there. Don't put your hand up underneath. You will lose it.